So guys, a couple weeks back when I used to have an intro on this YouTube channel, a lot of you guys seemed to quite like it and I got a lot of questions about how I created this one. So that is the topic for today's video. I'm going to show you step by step how to create it so that you can use it as an intro or maybe just an image slideshow. But for now, let's stop talking and get right into Resolve. All right, guys. So as I said in the beginning of this video, today we're creating a good looking image slideshow that you could also use as a intro sequence for your videos. So this is the thing that we're creating today. Pretty simple, pretty clean. Nothing special. So let's start things out by grabbing our media in that we want to use for this project. For me, it's just this image. And as you can see right now, it doesn't fill up the whole screen. So let's fix that. Right, perfect. So now right click on the clip, go to new fusion clip, and then just hop into the fusion page. So once you've done this, you're in the fusion page and you get your media in one, which is your image or your video clip, doesn't matter. And your media out node, which will transfer everything that you've created back to the edit page. So let's start things out by grabbing a background node, go to the background one and drag down the alpha channel completely. Now connect the output of background one to the output of media in one to create a merge one. All right, so once you've done this, there are a few things that we've got to change because our media in one is currently connected to the background of merge one and our background one is currently connected to the foreground of merge one. And we want to change that. So we can do this by clicking on merge one and hit control and T, which will automatically swap the inputs around or just grab this and put it right there and this one in there. Doesn't matter which way to do this, hitting Control and T is just a bit faster. So once you've done that, go to Merge 1, hit Shift Spacebar, so this Select Tool part comes up, and we want to search for a Brightness and Contrast node, so let's add this. First of all, what we're just creating is um, this blurry kind of background. So let's go ahead, go to Brightness and Contrast, and lower the saturation quite a bit probably around there, and then also lower the contrast so that our image gets pretty flat. Now, once we've done that, click on this brightness and contrast node, hit shift and spacebar, and then search for a blur. Oh, didn't want to do that. Now click on this blur node and click add. And on this blur, all we want to do is increase the blur size. You can choose whatever you want. I recommend between six to eight. So now once we're done with the blur node, we need another merge node. So let's just click on this merge node, hold shift, hover over this line. And once it turns blue, you can let go of your mouse and will automatically connect this in. Now the next step is go to background one, grab the output of background one and drag it towards the input of merge two. Now things are swapped around. So go to merge two and hit control and T to swap around our inputs. And now one quick little tip for organization purposes, you can hold alt and just left click on this line and it will create this junction. So it doesn't do anything. It lets you just organize better. Once we've done that, we can go to merge two, click this polygon node because this is the selection that we're doing that is not blurred out. And you can just create whatever shape you like. For me, I'm just doing something like that. Make this probably a little bit bigger. This one a little bit smaller. Just like that, it's looking good. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and go to Polygon 1 in the Inspector tab and click this Invert button. So all that we've done is just cut out the portion of the video that should not be blurred out. So once we move, start to move this, everything that is inside here is clean and everything that is outside is blurry. But this is just transparent for the moment, but don't worry, we will fix that in a second. 
So the next step is to add a shadow node. Go to merge to, hit shift spacebar and then search for shadow. Just add this shadow node. And on this shadow node, all we want to do is to increase the softness and you'll immediately notice if you watch those edges right here, we get a clean little shadow there. So now the next step is to actually fill in this blank space right here. In order to do that, click somewhere on the free space so that you haven't selected any node. Hit shift spacebar and then search for brightness and contrast once again. Now, put this brightness and con contrast node somewhere below merge one because we have to connect it to merge one. And now connect the output of brightness and contrast to the output of shadow one to create merge three. But things are swapped around again. So let's go ahead, go to merge three and hit control and T to swap around the inputs. And once you've done that, you can see the clean part of the image right here. And as well for organization purposes, hold alt and just left click in here to create this little junction. And now go to brightness and contrast, increase the saturation just a bit, increase the contrast just a bit, also increase the gain quite a bit. And the reason we're doing this is because we want this part of the image, wherever our polygon is, to stand out. So we're pretty much finished. All we need is some text. So let's go ahead, grab this text node and connect this text one to the brightness and contrast output that we've just created. And the reason we're adding our text node in between this merge one brightness and contrast and merge three is because we want the text to be visible just inside of this polygon window. Don't worry, it will make sense in a second. So let's go ahead, go to text one. So now just type in whatever text you want. For me, it's just my name and tutorials. So as you can see right now, our title is hidden um, when it's behind the blurred space. And once it gets to this clear space, it will reveal the title. So all we want to do now is change the font to whatever font you like. For me, choosing Montserrat because I always choose that because I like it. And now right click in this text window, go to character level and styling. And now you can click this modifiers tab in the top right corner. Now click on this and then make sure you have text one node selected. Left click in the viewer and hover over the lower title. So once you've done that, go to shading, and then you can choose between different styles or whatever. Probably increase the thickness quite a bit and then change the color. Don't like this one. That is looking pretty good. So once we've done that, we can decrease the spacing. just like that. And yeah, I think I like that. So the only thing that is missing is a rectangle tool that is wiping off this whole animation. All we need is a merge node, hold shift and hover over this. And now go to your background one. Remember, this is the background with the alpha channel, grab the output and put it into the input of merge five. Now on merge five, you have to swap the inputs around once again. And for organization purposes, let's create another junction. So, and then on merge five, let's create the rectangle tool and make this bigger and probably at an angle. That should be fine. So once you've done that, we can start animating things. So when you think about this whole node tree, we don't have to animate a whole lot. All we have to do is to animate this polygon one, this text one, and this rectangle one. So let's start out with this polygon one, and then probably go to frame 46, hit a keyframe on center, and then go all the way to the beginning and drag this to the left. Now then, Open up the spline window. 
check this polygon center one path and displacement highlight both keyframes and then right click go to ease and choose out cubic and probably make this a little bit faster so the next part that we want to animate is our text and it should be right in this position on frame 46 so let's go to this text one node go to the inspector go to layout and keyframe the center now go all the way to the beginning and drag this to the right just outside of frame when you have your spline window open, you'll immediately see that you've created this animation curve. And you can highlight both keyframes, right click, go to ease, out cubic, and make this just a little bit faster. So the last part that we want to animate is this rectangle part, and this should wipe off the whole animation at the end. So let's go to frame um, 100. Make sure you're on this rectangle one. Then keyframe the center, go to frame 119, which is the last frame of this animation, and then just drag it all the way to the left. And once I drag this to the left, you'll immediately see that the background becomes transparent. Now in the spline window, check this zoom to fit button, highlight both keyframes, and then go to ease, and probably choose in cubic. This is looking fine. So once we've done that, we can go back to the edit page. So right click on this fusion clip, go to render cage fusion output and turn this on on. You can also go to playback, render cage and set this to smart. So once this is rendered, we can watch this back to see what our animation looks like. So as of right now, it is cached and let's just play this. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Fusion, or maybe just don't have the time to create it for yourself, there is a download link in the description down below where you can just download this exact settings file. So yeah, that is all I got for today's tutorial. I hope you like it. If so, please consider leaving a like and a subscribe if you haven't already, because that would just help the channel a lot. So that's all I gotta say. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.